Today on the Home Tip Show, I'm gonna show you how to build this. It is a fenced in raised garden bed for your backyard. So you're gonna need um, a, few, a few tools. Some of these tools are mandatory and that's what I'm gonna show you here first. And then some of the tools are be, will be optional that'll maybe just make it more convenient for you. So of course you're gonna need a, uh, just a standard shovel. I did have to go out and buy a post hole digger. Um, this one was, what is it, the Anvil brand? It's from Home Depot, it was $39. I think if I had to do it over again, I would have bought the, the, the upgraded version a little bit nicer because I noticed that these flexed a little bit and I was kind of worried that for extended use, um, like if I was doing a, a fence or something around a backyard, uh, probably wouldn't last. But for the purposes of, of doing the corners on, you know, this um, little raised fenced in garden bed, this was just fine. Again, $39. Um, having a Sawzall is very handy um, and just kind of a, a you know, a multi-purpose blade. I don't, not necessarily this blade, but um, this is just a DeWalt Sawzall. Uses a similar battery setup to my drill. Um, you can rent these if you don't have one. Uh, you can also just buy an electric one. They're not real expensive. Um, and the only place you're gonna use that is at the end when you are cutting off um, your posts right here at whatever height you want. I just find the Sawzall is easier to do it with. You're also gonna want to have a square and I would say at least a three foot, maybe even a four foot level. That's really important. Of course, you're gonna want to have um, some sort of uh, cordless screwdriver and um, any screws you buy are gonna come with the necessary bits for it, or most of them do nowadays. Um, gonna want a saw, just a hand saw like this, uh, electric saw, um, with just a, a general purpose um, uh, blade in it. Um, I like Ryobi, I think that for the DIYer, um, it's not DeWalt, it's not um, one of the, the better brands out there. There are better brands than DeWalt. But Ryobi is really good for the guy who maybe uses their saw two or three times a year, right? Like me, um, I've got I've got this saw. I have um, a couple others, and they're all Ryobi, and they're all a few years old, and they all work great. You're also going to want to get you a um, at least a 16 foot um, tape measure. Um, I like to get decent quality tape measures because it does make a difference. Um, I also believe that having a, um, a, um, a stapler, you know, um, I guess, what do you call those? Those are like uh, upholstery staplers, but you're gonna be using the stapler and the uh, some T T50 size uh, half inch staples. You're gonna use that to affix the wire cloth uh, that goes around the, the outside, the fencing. You're gonna use that to affix that to the sides. And then finally, just uh, having a, a different types of drill bits and um, um, you know little fittings that you might need through the course of you know, so drill bits, Phillips, um, uh, different bits and things of that nature. Just good to have a selection of those. Of course, you're going to want to have a hammer, um, something similar to this. Doesn't need to be a big framing hammer, but whatever you have is fine. Um, you're going to want some uh, wire snips, you need a pen and pencil, and of course an extension cord. And I always believe in getting quality stuff, and I like to get lighted extension cords. But that's what, that's, those are the minimum tools that you're going to need to build this project. So if you don't have these tools, guys and gals, <laughs> it's a good excuse to go buy some tools. Alright, I'm going to show you next the, the, what I would call the optional tools, things that aren't necessarily necessary, but will maybe make things a little bit easier for you. A couple uh, tools that uh, I would just consider to be optional is you might want to pick up a set of gloves uh, here. A speed square, I don't know, that might actually might not be optional. It's really great when you're marking, um, you know, your cut lines across your two by sixes and two by twos. And then this is a pretty decent project. It's a project you can get done in a day, but having um, a little tool belt, something like this, you can put a, a uh, hammer and your tape measure 
and something with a magno grip on the outside for for other things screwdrivers whatever you might need um, pretty handy uh, to have something like that so I put that in the optional and then of course I don't show them but a pair of safety glasses when you're doing your uh, saw cuts is mandatory as far as hardware is concerned um, you're gonna want to pick up a box of uh, T50 half inch staples for your staple gun some inch and a quarter decking screws some two inch screws uh, some two and a half uh, inch screws and maybe even some three inch if you can these are actually uh, not the right type but I used them anyway they most of these will actually come with the um, the bit included and so it's just a lot better uh, tighter fit uh, more secure fit when you're using your your uh, your drill to uh, to screw the screws in as far as other hardware you're going to want to pick up some of this uh, what they call wire cloth right here um, it's great for creating little fences um, this is 25 inches or 24 inches by 25 feet i believe it is so one roll uh, we'll get around this with a little bit to spare um, and uh, i just cut it on each side and staple it on and go and when you're stapling it on you want to make sure you you know overlap a little bit you know you don't want it necessarily past the top because you want to be able to put your hand on here and not get you know not get cut so down just about a quarter inch from the top and then down here you want to overlap two or three inches um, as far as other hardware you want to pick you up a, a galvanized hasp something like that um, there's lots of different kinds available. Just get the kind that works for you. You're gonna to wanna to pick up some, uh, I think these are three or four inch hinges. And, and then you'll also wanna get four of these corner braces. So not very expensive. You don't need to spend $100 on a gate uh, kit. Um, you can build this. I think I've probably got 20 bucks into that hardware right there. So, and it, it works great. Just all you need. Now you're trying to get in there, aren't you? So that's really it for hardware. Now's a good time to remind you, if you like videos like this, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to us. Okay, so as far as your uh, material you're gonna need to create this, um, you're gonna need six eight foot two by sixes that are treated. These are gonna make up your your uh, bottom rung here. You're gonna need four four by fours. Um, I got mine in six foot and cut them off. Um, how deep you bury them is gonna depend on what part of the country you're in. For example, down here in the south, we only really need to bury things 12 inches to get below the frost line, but I always go two feet down here just to be safe. In Illinois, for example, you have to be 36 inches. In Northern Maine, you have to go 60 inches. So you really need to do a Google uh, search or Bing search and figure out um, how deep you need to be. You're also gonna need at least two bags of Sacrete concrete because I set these in concrete so they don't go anywhere. Um, and uh, I used a half of bag per post. Again, I'm two feet deep, a half a bag per post, so I only needed two of the sacrete bags. I'd also pick up, I don't know, eight, eight to ten, six to eight, I don't know, number of two by twos, uh, eight foot two by twos treated. And you're going to use those things like for, uh, for like framing your, your gate, you know, you're going to, you're going to cut them up, but you're also going to use them to brace your four by fours so that they stay level while they're drying. You know, you're gonna screw one in on the north-south and one on the east-west. Um, you're gonna run a stake into the ground on both of them, screw them to the stake, and make sure you have those nice and straight um, and level, right? Because that's, having those level means everything to this project. So, and you'll want them dry, let them dry overnight and then take them off and then you can use them over. So I like to get, I don't know, I think I got six to eight two by twos. They're cheap, a uh, couple dollars each. And, you know, I use them 
here for this post. I used them here, um, and I used them to create the gate. Let's see, what else? Anything else? Um, as far as the, the dirt goes, I like the Kellogg brand um, that you can get from Home Depot. It comes in bags. This probably has... Um, I bought five more bags this year, and you can see it's still not high enough, uh, but it is what it is. Prior to that, there were 15 bags in here. Um, so this is probably 20 bags. I don't know, start with 15, see where that leads you. It's gonna, over time, it's gonna break down and it's gonna settle. Um, but this has been here five years and uh, I don't plow it up, I don't do anything. I wanna keep all the bugs and, and, and the, the natural goodness uh, in the bed. And anytime you plow it up, you disrupt the, that, that, I guess what they call it, biome or whatever. And so you're gonna probably need about 15 bags. The dimensions on this are eight foot uh, by four foot. So minimal cuts necessary. You're gonna cut two of your two by sixes um, at four foot. You're just gonna cut them in half. That's gonna give you each of your ends. Um, and, and that's really what you need for materials. As far as the process, it's pretty simple. Um, how I did this was I started by uh, creating my bottom rung of two by sixes. And I just screwed those together. Um, just threw the ends, screwed them together, uh, set it on a flat surface and then brought it out here and set it down and got it level. Got it as level as I could. You don't need that. That's my instructions. You don't need to, you don't need to eat those. Thank you. Um, and so I got it level. Um, I, I dug down one end, got it down into the ground a little bit. And what that allowed me to do is by getting it square and getting it level, I then had my corners. I knew where my corners needed to go, right? So I took my pulse hole digger, dig down in on each of the corners, get it down to two feet or whatever I needed, set my posts, braced them, leveled them, put the concrete in and let it sit overnight. Next morning came out, took my braces off, all four of the posts and screwed into um, the, uh, the posts. So I had a good firm base. I then set my second row of two by sixes on top, screwed those into the posts um, on all four corners and yeah that's it so again this this end is just eight footer cut in half that end is an eight footer cut in half and these are full eight footers on the side so like i said a total of six two by six eight footers uh, for the next step um i i set these two by twos here and all i did here was just screw these in i think i actually screwed them in this way and it stuck through my screws were a little bit too long and so I just used a uh, um, my saws on just cut that off right there on both sides because the screw actually came through about a half inch and you don't want to do that you don't want to leave a screw sticking through because it's a sharp point it can hurt you and uh, gouge your leg later so I just put you know a couple screws into this one got it where I wanted it uh, then I framed up uh, the top with two by twos again full eight footer here uh eight footer cut in half here eight footer here now you do need to go ahead and run your two by twos down the side as well and you'll you'll figure this out as you do it and the, the reason is because you got to have a surface that's flat to to be able to uh, put your staples into right you can't have you can't have uh you can't not use some sort of board there so i did two by twos just kind of like framed it up like a picture frame right on the bottom though i just used the two by six i just screwed right into the or, uh, stapled right into the two by six so you see it's kind of picture framed all the way around then just take your wire cloth um roll it out and start stapling right um you're going to use some wires wire snips and cut it off again try not to get it above this because you will end up like I have a couple places that it sticks up above and it will cut your hand so I'm gonna have to go back and kind of trim that down a little bit so this is really simple like I said it takes you can do it in a day but you really need to probably do it over two days because you need to let that concrete harden overnight um, any 
dirt that you dig out, clay or whatever, just throw it on the outside because if you don't, and if you're sitting on any type of incline, when you water, that water will want to run out. So I just threw my clay out here and then next spring we'll probably throw some grass seed in there or something. And as far as the gate goes, um, I'd never built a gate before. This was my first time. This was super easy. The trick is you want a quarter inch on every side and top and bottom. So if this, for example, is 30 inches, you want to go a half inch shorter with all these boards, right? So you do 29 and a half inches on this board. So you get a quarter inch here, quarter inch here, again, on the up and down as well. So you have enough clearance. And that's really all there is to it. I bought those corner braces. I measured it out, say 29 inches by, I'm just gonna make up some numbers, say 29 and a half inches by uh, 24 inches or whatever. Um, and just created this little, you know, I put these braces here in there because, because I wanted to my, my um, uh, hinges to have good solid surface to go into right here. And so, you know, this is very solid, very steady, very sturdy. Um, we don't use it a lot, but, you know, occasionally we might need to get in there to do something. So, but super simple. I mean, I'm not going to give you the step-by-step -step on how to do this. You can look at it and you can see what I did. Um, you know, use your imagination, but it is a half inch smaller than the opening I created. And I just kind of, again, I just kind of framed it out with the two by twos, measured it, cut my door to be a half inch smaller. So a quarter inch on each side. So that's it. Um, it's very easy to install, uh, to create this. Uh, you just need to make sure you have the right tools and you allocate the right amount of time. Um, probably need, uh, if you've never done a project like this, you probably need two days to do it. Um, you know, you're gonna be making some cuts with your saws. You're gonna uh, be using your, your cutters to, your wire cutters to trim your wire or cloth. And I think when you're all said and done, you'll have a product that you really like. So, that's the overview. Um, there will be additional information in the video description file. And talk to you next time. Bye. If you like videos like this, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.